Hello, friends, and welcome to the Wisdom for Life broadcast. This is Pastor Glenn with another episode that we hope will bless you. Awesome, awesome. Praise the Lord. Hey, turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 3, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Acts chapter 3, verse 2. Hopefully you know where Acts is. If you don't know where Acts is, you may not know where you are this morning. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Hey, if you're there already, I want you to touch your neighbor. Look to your neighbor right now and say, are you expecting? Some of the dudes, some of the dudes in the room are like, I'm not expecting. Don't touch me. Don't touch me with that. <laughs> hey, this morning I'm going to talk, I'm going to have like two or three weeks on, on this. We won't preach it all today. Uh, we'll shorten the message here today, but... I want to talk uh, for the next three weeks at least on how expectation, the environment or the atmosphere of expectation draws us into a higher level to where we receive the power, the provision, come on, and the promises of God. But it's at a, listen, listen, it's at a higher level. The power, watch this, the power, the promises of God, come on now, the provision is at a higher level than the problem and the place of the predicament. They're not on the same level. If you're looking for God to show up and your expectation is too low, and if you're just focused on the problem or the predicament, you'll miss the power. Come on now. The presence, the promise, and the provision of God. They're not on the same level. It's always at a higher level. They're not on the same plane. And so sometimes, sometimes there are saints that are not getting some things that are benefited to them in the Word of God. They're missing it because their expectation is too low. How low can you go? How low can So we're way down here thinking it's going to show up. And God says it's already showed up. But it's higher than where you're looking. Look at this in Acts chapter 3, verse 2. A certain man, I'm going to come back to this phrase in just a second, lame from his mother's womb. Stop right there. His mother is often left out of the story. We don't know much about her. We don't know that if she's still alive when the miracle happens next. We don't know that in the story whether or not she was able to see the miracle. But we also don't hear in the story that she's dead and not around. So let's not make any assumptions. Perhaps this mother who had for nine months was expecting, come on, was expecting, was carrying this provision inside of her and birthed her son with expectation. Perhaps she's seen what she was expecting when he got healed after all. Only it didn't take nine months. Maybe it took nine years. Maybe it'd take 18. Just know this. Her expectation had to rise over time so that she could someday see this boy that was born lame from birth. Now is, the Bible says, leaping, jumping, and praising God. Why is that important? Let me tell you. This was the social security of the age. This is how you retired. Your, your hope and your expectation was, give me a son, Lord. Give me a son. Because someday the son would not only take on the family name, he would also take on the family business. And in taking on the family business and the family name, he could provide for his mother in her old age. But not if he's born lame. Not if he shows up like this. And here is the challenge of expectation. If you've ever expected something before, and the way it showed up was lower than what you expected, come on, there is the temptation to never expect higher again. Amen. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. Wake up, church. Amen. There, is the, there is the attitude that it does no good to hope. That it doesn't do me any good to believe that things will get any better. That I'm just going to have to eke through life. 
Because everything I expected showed up in a way that was unexpected. I birthed a son, but the son is lame. He won't be able to provide for me. He's not going to be able to do the things that I need him to do. So I'll give up. But this son and his expectation <laughs> was low too. It wasn't high enough. Say hi. hi. Say hi. hi. Let's read the rest of the text. It says, lame from his mother's womb was carried, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them, sorry, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked alms, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Now, he is lame. He's low. He's low. And he's got friends in high places. Come on. He does now. He says, look on us. And he gave heed to them, expecting, expecting to receive of them. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, help us to be positioned. <laughs> help us, God, to understand that our position of expectation mustn't be too low. God, it can't be on the same level or place, God, of the problem or the predicament. That we must, God, with our expectation, even though we've been disappointed, Lord, even though, God, we feel like we've been disenfranchised, and now we're even in despair. We must go higher with our expectation. We must, God, remove ourselves from a position of the problem and predicament. And we must rise, God, by faith. We must rise to a position of promise, of power, and of provision. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody said, come on. Amen. Amen. A little bit stronger. Amen. I mean, I just, I'll, I'll toot the... Well, here it is, man. All right. Grandma Emma. Famous. My grandma. Famous for biscuits and gravy. Make you give your heart to Jesus right then and there. Biscuits and gravy. Nobody's touched it until Jason Johnston came into my life. That's another story. I love my grandma. I love Jason. Biscuits and gravy at grandma's house. Also made cornbread, real cornbread. Not from a box. We ain't talking jiffy. <laughs> Get yourself saved right now. There's an altar right here. Get up here and repent. We're talking from scratch. I mean, made it for real. And get in there and cover everything with butter. I mean, soak it in butter. Awesome, man. I stayed several summers at her house. Reason being... My parents kept getting divorced and then remarried. Divorced, remarried. It happened several times in my life. So I'd end up at grandma and grandpa's, which was awesome, you know, because the cooking was good. They, they gave me money. That was awesome. But grandma Emma also gave me some incredible, not incredible, credible advice. Good advice. I remember one time I went out and I applied for a job. It was a job just delivering newspapers. Now, now, my nickname was Mo. You know why they used to cut around my head. They put a bowl on my head and shaved around it, and I looked like Mo from Three Stooges. She said, Mo, she said, did you get that job? And I said, Grandma, no. She said, I'll tell you why you didn't get that job. You didn't expect high enough. And I said, well, Grandma, somebody's got to deliver newspapers. And she said, not you, Mo. Not you. There's something higher for you. You're not aiming high enough. I said, well, Grandpa, Grandma, what's the big deal, man? Why can't I, you know, they won't take me. So why would anybody hire take me? She said, that's not how life works. The, the, the expectation in you was low, and they seen that. Show up to your next interview that way. If you'll show up to the interview saying, my expectation is high, it'll change your life. Stop showing up to church expecting nothing. You'll get nothing because you showed up with no expectation. I remember I got a better job. It was a, it was a better paying job. I came back to her. I said, Grandma, you're right. You're right. She said, that's good, Mo. I had some friends that I was hanging out with. She said, Mo, your expectations are too low. Those friends are too low. I said, well, they're my friends. And besides, they make me laugh and stuff. She goes, no, you need to hang around people higher. 
Did you know that, did you know relationships are like scaffolding? Some people will only take you so high and then you've got to put another level. You know who I've hung out with since? My entire life since I've been saved, I've always hung out with people older than me. I want to, I want to be around people wiser, smarter, and will, and will increase my level of expectation. You understand what I'm saying? I want to learn and grow. Why in the world would I hang out with people that are on the same level? I, listen, I want to take on new devils, so I need a new level. Oh, just me. So, I got some new friends. And these friends got better grades. These friends knew Jesus. These friends helped me understand what it meant to serve God. That got me somewhere. Then I was dating these girls, and I was getting dumped. Left and right. Because, I mean, come on, look at me. I ain't, I ain't all that in a bag of chips. I don't have all that. I didn't have the looks going for me, that's for sure. So I kept getting dumped, serving Jesus, but hey, I want a girlfriend. I'm breathing. Maybe you know how this works. You don't, maybe you don't. I don't know. If you're, but I'm breathing. I need a girlfriend. I, need, I, want a, you know, I want a Christian girl and everything else. And I was going out with some of these girls, and they'd be with me for about a month or two, and then they'd dump me. And then I'd think, uh, well, if I didn't... If I couldn't be at that level, then my expectations were too high. And the temptation was to lower them, to continually lower my expectations because I thought, well, then somebody will want to be with me and stay with me. And my grandma sat down with me one day. She, sat, she has this Tennessee kind of, uh, she has this Tennessee kind of uh, culture to her. She said, oh, Mo, oh, Mo, you know. She said, make out a list. And I said, what kind of list? You need to put on that list everything you want and make it high. And I said, well, I want her to be hot. I want her to be hot, man. I want her to be I'm smoking hot. She said, well, write it down. And, 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 and I want her to be smart. We'll write it down. And I want her to have a great personality, way better than mine. We'll write it down. And, and Mo, you, what else you want? Well, I, I, I want her to be... I want her to be able to cook like you, Grandma. Well, don't write that one down. <laughs> no, no, I re- no, no. <laughs> Let's go back to hot. <laughs> and, and, and listen, I want her to be. I want her to have a personality that lights up a room. I want her to be able to. I want her to be able to just light up everybody's day. Because listen, I'm a little bit of an introvert at times, and I can get a little bit melancholy. And I need to be around Tigger. Come on, I need Tigger. If I'm Winnie the Pooh, I need Tigger. So that was the left-hand side of my list. And then she said, well, listen, if that's your expectation, then what's going to change about you? She said, you know what? You can start by getting in the bathroom and trimming your nose hair. (laughs) Date me. You get a haircut, a little bit different than what you got. Put some new clothes on. You know, what I didn't get, what I didn't get from my mom or a sister or somebody else, I got from my grandma. She said, you got to clean it up, dude. Because you're expecting. You know, it's kind of like when you, inv- when you invite somebody over to your house, you're expecting. You don't leave all that stuff on the floor, and you don't leave a mess. You got yesterday's clothes over on the couch over there. You didn't wash your dishes for four or five days. You know, people, <laughs> people today, they call you before they come over. That's not the way it used to be. So you always kept your house clean. Today, by God, you better call. I mean, you better call me first. And then it's a rush for 20 minutes. You know? Get everything cleaned up because you're expecting. You're expecting. Why is it you're expecting something high, but you aren't cleaned up? You're low. So I did all these things, and I prayed, and I met Sarah. And that's why when I met her, I was just like, you're it. Because you're hot. (laughs) And because you're you're smart, and you light up my life, and... And you're beautiful, and you light up a room, and listen, God's called me to the ministry. And she says, yeah, that's been prayed over me since I was born, that I was going to be a pastor's wife. We were married six months later. It was a done deal. I knew. Yeah. 
I haven't lost her. Did you say I lost her? No, I lost. Oh, okay. Oh, I've lost it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I haven't lost her. She's right there. <laughs> I had to raise to the level of what I expected. And if things weren't working out at the level I was at, I had to be, I had to be patient enough and allow God to change me enough to get to a new level so that I would be positioned in a better place to receive. It says that this man came to the gate beautiful. Obviously, men had carried him there. Listen, he was positioned okay, but not at a high enough level. Let, let me unpack it for you here. You see, he was carried there on a certain time of the day. It was about the ninth hour of the day. Why is this so important? This would be about 3 o'clock for us. And this is when people went to the temple to pray. How many of you know that's great? If you're ever going to get alms, you want to be in front of the people that are just going in to pray. That ain't too bad, right? But you need to walk, not just a, not just a Subway sandwich. You're still too low. You, you don't just need enough for today. You need to be able to walk. You need to be able to leap. You need to be able to praise God. You need to be able to provide possibly for your mother, for your family. Your expectation is too low. And so we know what happens when Peter and John gets there. Peter, and John, Peter says this. He says, he says, I know what you're expecting, but your expectation is too low. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that he reaches out his hand. It's right there in the text. He reaches out his hand and he picks him, he rises him up when he says it. Now get this, there isn't anybody, you can sit down brother, that was very good. It's like you knew what I was doing. Did we practice this? Oh we did, huh? Don't lie in the house of God. Okay, here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. There isn't anybody healed in the New Testament from being lame that God didn't say you need to get at a higher level for the healing. In other words, you don't ever see Jesus healing a lame man and saying, listen, you stay down there, I'll heal your legs. Now you know your legs are healed, now rise up and walk. No, he says, Jesus says to the lame man, in two other cases, he says, pick up your bed. Well, how do I pick it up? I'm lame. Pick up your bed, you're not going to need it anymore. And walk. And in another occasion, stay with me, stay with me. In another occasion, there's four friends, they're wanting to come to Jesus because they want their friend to be healed. They carry him in on a mat, and there's a crowd in the way. There's an obstacle in the way. They can't get to Jesus because of the people that are in the way. Now that sounds like church. They're faced the wrong direction if they're in the way. Well, why weren't they faced towards where the pain was and where the world is and where... It's okay to look at Jesus, but at some point, you've got to know Jesus is still with you and look to where the pain and the brokenness is. Amen. It's almost like the churches here heard this, okay? Go into all the world and preach the gospel, and this is what the churches heard, and invite them to church. That's not what God said to do. No, don't get me wrong. It's okay to invite somebody to church. I'm not telling you that's bad. But he said, go into the world and minister to the world where the world is. Well, maybe if I get him here on Sunday, they might die on Friday. Come on, now. Amen. What are you doing? You're not going to amen that? Amen. I'll get in your front yard. <laughs> I'll preach in your front yard. Amen. Your neighbors will know. Your pastor's crazy. These friends, they want to get him to Jesus. The crowd's in the way. They don't turn around disappointed. Well, I guess this didn't meet our expectation. Got up this morning expecting my friend to be healed. And that crowd was in the way. Guess it wasn't for me. Just wasn't for us. Sorry, Charlie. you got to be lame the rest of your life. No, what did they do? They got to another level. Ha <laughs> ha, church. <laughs> they went to another level. They got above that place where there was a problem and predicament. And they got up over the roof, cut a hole in the roof, and got their friend the healing that he needed. Sometimes God allows things to be in front of us to cause us not to give up on expectation, but to raise it. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. amen. Don't you think Jesus knew that day he'd heal that young boy? 
Don't you, don't you think for a minute that he could have told that crowd, get out of the way? No, what he wanted from those four friends and from that boy on the mat was to know this. If you want a higher promise, you have to move your position of expectation. I love what Peter and John did. Peter says, you got to come up here and raise him up. He gave, them, he gave them the hand and raised him up. How many of you know this, that, uh, that some people want a hand out, but God really wants to give a hand up? <laughs> How many of you know Jesus said the poor you'll have with you always? There's nothing wrong with that. We're supposed to minister to that. But it's not, the ministry isn't stay there and be poor. The ministry... What, you're going to talk to me later. Because some of you, this, this challenges you. You're just thinking, some people are meant to be down. <laughs> in any situation you're in, if you're willing to raise your expectation to the place of promise, provision, and His presence, you will not only get blessed for the day, you'll become a blessing. Amen. And that, come on now. See, there's two laws that work in this life. There's natural law, which you're very, very used to. So am I. Everybody say gravity. gravity. That's what you feel when you're older and everything's falling. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Everything's just getting lower and lower. There is a, there is a pull on, from life that's pulling you down, and it's harder and harder there's another law, and I don't want to geek you out this morning. I've got some professors in the room too, but it's called Second Law of Thermodynamics. It simply means this. Things aren't materialistically going to get better. They fall apart and get worse. Kind of like when you buy a Ford. It rusts at night. You can hear it. I meant Chevy. Chevy. Did I say Ford? I'm sorry about that. I shouldn't have said that in the house of God. Things are falling apart, not necessarily getting better. That's natural law. That's not spiritual law. That's not spiritual law. The way that faith works is it multiplies. Faith is a spiritual law of increase. It's increase, not decrease. It's higher, not lower. What God calls us to gives us an abundance Jesus said this about the devil. He says he obeys natural law. The thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life. And so it's higher. And it's more. Not for you. Not to you, but through you. Back to the woman. Back to conception. Back to uh, this idea here of carrying with expectation we see this about his mother his mother carried him in the womb for nine months her expectation was not that he would be born lame and this is the disconnect or the dissonance that we experience in life there is a dissonance or disconnect sometimes between the promise of God and then what we see in the results of our predicaments they're not the same right away but over time, every one of the promises of God are yes and amen. So God's already said yes, amen's your part. God doesn't have to amen himself. God don't amen himself. He only has to say yes. And you say amen, amen means make it so. Make it so. Even so, Lord. Okay, so... We see this and we say, this has been promised, but I don't see the predicament changing yet. And that's because we have an unwillingness to have a spirit of expectancy. Every mother knows what I'm talking about. Guys, dudes, we have not a clue. We just don't. I remember when my wife first came to me the first time with our first child. I think I was 18 years old. Yeah. Yeah. I was 18. Bad advice. You don't get married that young. And your kids don't either, and neither do your grandkids. Okay? But she came to, was I 18? 
No, I was 20. Cow, praise God. I, I did all right. All right, so I was 20. I have to ask her about it. I don't know. I don't have a clue. All right, so I was 20. She said, hey, hey, babe, I was just in the bathroom. Uh, I got news for you. And I'm like, okay, we all good? Uh, you're a dad. <laughs> Nobody back there to catch me. No cloth to lay over me, you know. Now everything's changing. We're expecting. Our lives change. What are some of the things that changed? Well, she began to carry. She was pregnant with possibility. A child was on the way. This baby began to grew, grow and began to kick inside of her. It wants to live. It wants to get out. It doesn't want to stay there. You have a dream too. And it needs to grow inside of you. And it's going to get to a point to where the dream is uncomfortable. And it's going to kick inside of you. And it's going to want out. It, it wants to live. And it's not happy with its surroundings. It wants, to, it wants to get outside. And then here's the thing. You're going to want it out. There's just that last, you know, few weeks. It's like, get out of me. I remember being by my wife in, 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 at the hospital. And we're doing all this Lamaze. I thought Lamaze before that was like a car race. And we got, and I'm, I'm feeding her ice chips. I'm like, here you go, baby, here you go. And I'm just steady feeding her ice chips. I'm like, breathe. He, he, who? He, he, who? And she's like, he, 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 get out of my face. And I'm, I don't know what to do. I remember seeing Caitlin when she was born, and I remember looking into her eyes. She looked right at me. And it just absolutely, I just bawled. I just, I fell apart, man. You know, here's, you carried this. You were, you were expecting, and this, this ex expectation produced. The other thing that happened was, is there was contractions. And boy, those are fun. I mean, I wouldn't know, but they got drugs for that now. You know, they got all kinds of stuff. You can get this and that, and I don't know, man, you can get all kinds of stuff, but but back then, we, we didn't do it that way. And so when the contractions came, they were painful. Let me tell you, that's when you know the dream is ready to be out of you. You, you may look at cr cr contractions in a way that isn't spiritual. You may see contractions in a way and you say, well, that's, th this is too painful. I feel like I had a dream and I've carried it now for some time, Lord. You promised me this. But now, it, I, I, why, am I, why do I feel punched in the gut? And it comes now even more often and more often and more often. And we look at a contraction probably the wrong way. A, a contraction is just a sign that God is about to birth what He's called you to do. A contraction is great evidence that you're about to bring forth what He's promised. Ooh, ooh. You say... What do we do when there's a contraction? You push. <laughs> I mean, you push. Oh, Pastor, I heard a message about two years ago. It pushes an acronym. Pray till, until something happens. Yeah, tell that to your wife when there's contractions. <laughs> Honey, come on now. I'm praying. I'm praying. I, I love this. Exodus 14, 15. This verse changed my life especially for Pentecostal people who think prayer services are the only answer. Prayer services are powerful. It's not the only answer. you got to get up from when you're praying, and you got to get out there and push. Then the Lord said to Moses, quit praying. Well, pastor, we're going to have a meeting right after church. You may escort yourself out, and we're going to all talk about this. No, it's in the Word of God. Then the Lord said to Moses, quit praying. Quit praying and get these people moving forward. March. And this is what the Spirit of the Lord would have me to say to us. We need both. We need prayer. But we also need to push. It's not going to be born by just prayer. You're going to need to push too. When did God say this to God's people and to Moses? They were trapped at the Red Sea. Perhaps you could see the contraction here this morning. They were 
faced with Pharaoh's army coming towards them. There are probably about a million to two million of them in total. Have you ever been to a have you ever been to a Walmart or a JC Penny on Black Friday? Then you don't know what I mean by contractions of a crowd. Door opens, and there's all these people, right? And everybody's pushing. Pharaoh's army is bearing down on them. They're trapped at the Red Sea. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? We're trapped now. What, I can't get to where I'm going. God, you led me to a place that has no place for me to go. And who is bearing down on me is going to kill me. Who's bearing down on me is going to take my life. Can you feel the contractions? Here comes an army. There's a, there's a sea. There's no way out. Contraction. Contraction. Maybe I'll pray. That's good. Then God says, stop praying. Push. Amen. And Moses begins to step out in faith and he, he places his rod in front of the sea. And somebody came through and somebody came out. And on the other side of that was the birth of promise. <sighs> okay, one more. Two more. I lied. When you're expecting, your walk is different. You waddle. You're like a duck. You waddle. And, 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 it, and then we read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. We understand now that faith is not a leap. People say leap of faith. That's not in the Bible. That's not a verse from the Bible. Faith is a walk, not a leap. It's a series of steps. But those steps are waddles. Because you're carrying. You have a burden now. There's something that God has promised you. You, you, you can't walk as fast as you used to. You, your, your back starts to ache. You, you have a load. This is what's not preached in the American church today. What we're hearing is the promises of God without carrying them. There is a conception or a period of time where you carry the promise of God. And you've got to be willing to get from the promise to the provision with some patience of carrying. Amen. And these are a series of steps that sometimes are painful. Don't give up. Don't, don't let go. Don't waddle. You say, well, it's not moving fast enough. God never said it, it was a race, a speed race. We're called to, to run the race, but it's not. Listen, it's a marathon, and not, not, not a sprint. You, you just take another step to, and, and protect. Listen, when you were born inside of the womb, listen, you all began as a tiny little cell. Did you know that? I know you've not been this way your entire life. You know, it's really, really neat is, Mike. Once at, upon a time in your life, you were a tiny little cell. Isn't that neat, Mike? You, you like that? Have you ever thought of yourself that way? No, you haven't. Okay, well, welcome to church, Mike. You're here today. I'm here to introduce you to brand new thoughts. You began as a tiny little cell that died. Had all the expectation in the world. This is all I'll say. It swam with expectation. Glennhammons at gmail.com. <laughs> Got to its destination and died. Deposited the information so that that cell that it invested in could live. And you serve a God who came here with expectation and died. His name is the Word, and the Word became flesh, and the Word dwelt among us. And that word, that information from heaven, the promises of God, died! And you look at the cross and you, see, you should see it from the point of view of the disciples at that time. The promise is dead! But it deposited through that death 
the information of God the Father's promise for you to have life. Someone give them praise. So live. Live. And be abundant. Inside the womb of your mother, the first thing that God formed was your backbone, not your legs. Do you want to see how faith works? God said, when He was forming you in the womb, God said, someday you'll need to carry a load. Backbones aren't just for walking and standing up straight. They're for carrying. And God says, before I give you legs to carry, by faith I'm going to give you a backbone to stand up straight and carry my promise to fruition. And your mama protected all that. She didn't eat burritos. She, she, she was careful what she put inside of her. And that's the last point from today. We'll preach the rest next week. Don't miss next week because I ain't even started yet. Your diet is different. When you're carrying, your diet's different. I know God's promised you something, but you can't, you can't put everything into yourself and carry. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to protect your expectation. Watch this, watch this. Proverbs 4.23 Guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. Out of it flows all you do. Everything is birthed out of your heart and your spirit into your life. It is so important that you spiritually understand that there is a nutrition that's involved. You don't let doubt come in. You don't let people, oh, people, misery loves company. Oh, people, you know, they don't want it. They don't want to stay. Listen, I, I know, let's love them, okay? But we're in a fallen world. Not everybody wants you to succeed. Newsflash. I'm not going to give you the blue light uh, special in salvation. Most people don't want you to succeed, but God does. And if you listen to the people, man, They'll abort the things of God in you. They'll speak words to you. And they'll say things to you. And if you let them, it'll destroy what God has promised you're carrying. He said, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I have to watch my diet. I have, to, I have to be careful. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That didn't come from God, so it must have been the other guy. Listen, go brush your teeth. I don't need it. Go watch your mouth. I don't need it. I want to be careful. I want to be careful. I want to be careful what comes in because I don't want to, I want to protect what I'm carrying. I want to see it through this time. Next week, here's where I'm going to take you. And I don't want you to miss next week. Mary. Mary. Was told by an angel. She got a revelation. That didn't match her position. She got a promise that was above her position. You're going to birth the Messiah. This is so important. I want you to be ready for this. Pray for next week that you'll get this. When she got that revelation from the Lord, the Bible says this, that she had to get around another lady called Elizabeth. And the Bible says Elizabeth lived in the hill country. Oh, you're not with me. I preached for 40 minutes about getting higher. Woo! I've earned my lunch today, baby. <laughs> she had to get with Elizabeth, who had been expecting six months earlier. Amen. And you wonder why I want you in church. Because you need to get around people that are expecting. Because expectation is contagious. Amen. You need to get a little higher. She had to get into the hill country. Nobody was going to understand what she's going to You're going to birth the Messiah. You? You're going to birth the Messiah. You? 
And she got with Elizabeth, who was already expecting in her older age. She was in the hill country. And this is what we're going to talk about next week. The Bible says that when those two, those two bellies bumped, come on, that's from the book of Glenn Hammonds right there, unabridged. When they did the belly bump, Elizabeth had someone leap inside of her. <laughs> That's next week. Stand with me in prayer. Father, I want to thank you for this church, your church, and thank you for the people of expectation that are in this room. May I no longer in my life put myself at a low expectation. May I come into this house and come into this place and come around these people and not look, God, for just something to be dropped into my tin cup. But may someone reach out to me, grab me by the hand and the arm and say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise. Get up. Walk. Carry the load that God has given you and the promise and birth what you've been expecting. May we trust you, God, in what you're doing in this church. This church is valuable. It's at a higher place. We need the people in this room. And we need you. May we spur one another on, even this week. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. God bless you. Be a blessing this week.